Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I have a lot of tabs open, so we'll get to it quickly. If you want to revisit any of these topics, the links will be down in the comment section below. Okay, first up, the National Bureau of Economic Research. There are two Yale researchers who put together a risk and returns of cryptocurrency paper. They looked at three coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP, and they wanted to establish the risk return trade-off of cryptocurrencies uh, in a distinct uh, way different from those stocks, currencies, or precious metals. So cryptocurrencies have no exposure to the most common stock market and macroeconomic factors. Therefore, they wanted to look at the returns of these currencies and commodities. In contrast, they wanted to show how the cryptocurrency returns can be predicted. And they cite there are two factors. So the first factor is momentum. When things are going up, it's kind of like a, a herd mentality. And when the things are going down, then everything falls with it. The second one is investor attention effect. So this is market sentiment. This is when we look at things like Google Trends and Twitter. And if we are able to look at these um, indexes, that will allow you to analyze the exposure uh, to your risk with these cryptocurrencies. So they took into effect uh, the price market changes from 2011 to 2018. Uh, they cite how volatile it is, and yes, it has big swings. Sometimes those swings can happen in a matter of few hours, but I think that when you look uh, at what they cite as the most significant pred predictor, which is market sentiment and the basic momentum, I just couldn't agree more. I've always felt that the market sentiment is so important. I know a lot of people are just so strong on technical analysis and it's okay. It has its um, good points and it definitely does give you some indication of uh, future price movement, but I really am a big believer in the market sentiment. So I have two free to tools for you that I'm gonna share with you. This one is the uh, Crypto Fear and Greed Index, and it's basically uh, an index that looks at different sources and then crunches them all together and gives you a number. So zero is when we are in extreme fear up to a range of 100, which is uh, extreme greed. And we have a extreme fear number today of 19. This was last updated on August 9th. Yesterday's number was 23. The last week was 36. And we've been in a fearful mode for the past month with a number of 29. So if we look in more detail and kind of drive, drive down into what exactly they're looking at, they're measuring um, volatility. So 25% of that number is looking at the um, volatility and max drawdowns of Bitcoin and they compare it with the corresponding average values of the last 30 uh, days and 90 days. Then they look at market momentum and that equates for 25%. Again, they're using the comparison of 30 and 90 days. And then we have 15% of social media. This is Reddit and also Twitter. Uh, let me just see, do they use um, anything else? No, with the Twitter, they are using various hashtags uh, for each of those coins and they check how fast and how many interactions they receive uh, within certain time frames. Okay, interesting. Then they use surveys which make up 15%, dominance, 10%, trends, 10%. Trends is basically your Google uh, trends data. Just as the um, research paper says, 
that they look for the uh, interest within Google Trends. That is a great indicator for predicting price. So when you want to just have a quick look at the current fear and greed index, use this link. It will be down in the comment section. Another really good one is called Coin Gossip. It does have a Twitter in beta, but right now we're looking at the Reddit. And so for the last seven days, uh, Bitcoin has been in the number one position with the most gossip. So 37% of the chatter on Reddit is about Bitcoin. In regards to most positive, there is a coin out there called Kin, and it is in that most positive because it's had a 526% increase in market gossip sentiment going up. Another positive one is Nano, and Icon has the most gossip change. So the wonderful thing about this pie chart is you can just click on the actual segment and the story will come up, who posted, the time, and the date. So we can see uh, this is within the last seven days. So you can then click on this if you want to actually go to the story itself. Uh, let's take a look at XRP, shall we? Let's look at this XRP. This is in the last uh, seven days. So you can see that users can now purchase across 200,000 plus online stores with XRP uh, and use five other cryptocurrencies. That story came out on August 8th. Another one is the Ripple Labs Inc. and XRP tokens under securities investigation. That's a new one. That's, that's a story that, um, just broke in the last 24 hours. There's a firm who's really chasing class action lawsuits. I think on their Twitter page, they have more than eight or nine announcements of class action suits that they are pursuing, one of which is even Facebook. They're in Madison or they're on Madison Avenue in New York City. And yeah, I just think that they are one of those firms that just really chase the class action suits. Here we go. Let's keep it moving. Should we, is there anything on the bottom here? Well, if you want to use this bottom portion, you can see that if there's a line across, the sentiment is kind of neutral. If you see the thumbs up, it's got a positive amount. It'll tell you uh, also the change in the last 24 hours and the change in terms of dollars in the last seven days. So this is a very good tool. I think it's one of my favorites. Okay, this is something you should all print out and put next to your desk because you need to remember to take the uh, emotion out of your cryptocurrency trading and hodling. This will show you the roller coaster you go through. Uh, you start very optimistic and following the optimism is excitement, which is then followed by thrill. And you think, wow, I really feel happy about this investment, which brings you to the uh, euphoric feel. Euphoria is when you are at maximum financial risk. After that, very often it's followed by anxiety which then is followed by denial and then comes fear and then oh my gosh desperation then you have your panic and then your capitulation uh oh, maybe these markets just aren't for me followed by despondency where you have then some depression which is the point of maximum financial opportunity. And then after you feel your depression comes a little bit of hope, followed by your relief and back to optimism. So this is a very much psychological, emotional roller coaster. And we need to remember to remove ourselves from these emotions or it just gets so tiring and you can't enjoy the process.
So just don't forget. This is a really good follow-up article. There's lots of articles on that research paper that came out. The, uh, this one in particular I like. The Yale research says that a minimum 6% of Bitcoin should be in your investment portfolio. And even though uh, you might not be um, so crypto enthusiastic, the research paper says that even just holding 4% is good and if you are a complete bitcoin skeptic you can still benefit from holding one percent and it's this for mere diversification purposes so bitcoin ripple and ethereum again they are marked in that research paper as distinctively different from alternative investment opportunities such as stocks and precious metals as they have no exposure to the macroeconomic factors, nor uh, to most common stock market pressures. So I think if you are feeling a little bit on the depressed side, this will bring you on that cycle of hope because it's a very good story. Okay, this I'm gonna go very quickly on. It's just a re-clarification. As you know, the SBI Holdings came out with their 2018 quarter one results, and there are 312 slides in this presentation. But I was asked about this in particular because somebody was confused that the One Connect joint venture that was signed on July 31st is a bank in China. It is not. So the the reason why this particular joint venture with One Connect was signed is so that um, SBI can um, work with a company that's already in mainland China, in Hong Kong, and some other ASEAN countries uh, to uh, be related to the banking financial industry. So this is this one connect is a fintech solution company. They do software as a service. So they are doing biometrics, AI, blockchain and cloud technology. Yes, they do provide service to 468 banks and 1890 other financial institutions, but they are not a bank themselves. So the fact that doing this joint venture uh, which was a 60-40 split, by the way, 40% uh, went to uh, OneConnect, 60% for SBI. This is SBI's way of getting uh, to create established um, trust and uh, partnerships with companies that are servicing those banks in China. So it's it's just not a bank. The It's... Um, one Connect is a subsidiary of Ping An. Ping An is actually a, a large financial institution that is in Shanghai. They are private and they did a announcement of a working partnership back in February of this last year, February 5th to be exact. You can find that announcement on the SBI website. Okay, that's really all I had to say. I just want to clarify that one Connect is just a um, software as a service company to those banks. I don't even think I need to show you this one. This is the actual announcement from July 31st on the uh, joint venture. Okay, let's keep it moving. So this is very interesting. This is how One Connect is going to really operate right now. So Hong Kong Central Bank rules out a blockchain-based trade finance, and they have onboarded 21 banks, including HSBC and Standard Chartered Bank. And as you can see here, that uh, the partnership with the fintech company One Connect which is owned by Ping On Group, has launched a blockchain-powered trade finance system. And they will be able to service these 21 banks collectively as a whole. Uh, it is just like you see the um, Japanese bank consortium. This is 
also bringing everybody together to be able to have synergy with the same service providers. All right, I will put the comment or the link to this um, in the comment section down below because if you want to look closely uh, at it, it's a great article on how One Connect is going to play a role in these central banks. Okay, this is another clarification. Uh, somebody thought that um, they brought this to my attention because they had learned that there was a tremendous amount of volume of XRP on this website and wanted to know what was going on. They were under the impression it was a Chinese website. It's not. And I understand, I can totally understand why they would make this mistake because the default language comes up as Chinese. You can though trade on this site in English, in Chinese, in Arabic, Japanese, Korean, or Thai. And it is a website exchange. It's a little different than some of the other exchanges out there. Let me explain why. So it is basically a C2C, uh, it's, it doesn't really have fiat crypto trading. It is more of a C2C, which is like a P2P business model. So for verified clients of the ZB.com uh, website, you're able to buy and sell only in US Tether or QCash. And QCash, as you know, is an independent digital currency contract, which is based on uh, QTAM blockchain. So it, and that is based against the Chinese yuan, but it doesn't use any fiat at all. So it is a little bit different. And yes, you cannot do any uh, leverage or margin trading. And in conclusion, I want to show you here that according to the website, uh, this is um, that the, uh, according to the information on the website, ZB.com's headquarters are in North America, Canada, and the United States, and is also has operations in Southeast Asia, Bangkok, West Dubai, that's why you see the Arabic, uh, as well as South Korea and Switzerland. And although it says it has plans to obtain licenses in the United States and Thailand, which is why you see those two other languages, uh, currently ZB.com does not hold any licenses and is registered offshore in the independent state of Samoa. So I just wanted to clarify that because people were saying that it had all this XRP um, trading happening for uh, uh, coming from China and that's just not the case. So let's look a little bit further here. When we go to uh, CoinLib, we can, this is the actual um, ZB.com uh, website and it is breaking down the volume. And you can see that, gosh, XRP doesn't even, within the um, money flow in the last 24 hours, I love these charts, you can see here that XRP is just uh, 1.83 million. So it's just not uh, anything, it's just a drop in the bucket. and. You can see here the trading is being done in Tether, or you can see here there's trading coming in in the QTIM. So you can get the actual results of um, the currency trading flow on this CoinLib. This is a really great website if you don't use them. Um, please feel free because they're very um, accurate and I just love the way they break down their charts. This is the founder and CEO of ZB.com. And this is where I just learned this gets interesting. So Alex Yang, who is located in Hong Kong, He's the founder of FunV and co-founder of BitBank. Now BitBank should ring a bell because BitBank is the largest 
exchange in Japan for XRP. And BitBank Group owns ZB.com, EX, EXX.com, and BW.com. BW.com is interesting. They do a lot of exotic trading. Like uh, they've got a, this week, they have um, a very interesting uh, derivative going for mining. Really, it's totally exotic tra trading. So this is interesting now according to the person who asked me on the comment section they wanted to know about all this volume there was supposedly um what was it seven million seventy million dollars of xrp volume on the zb.com trade site i don't know but this is maybe what i think and i just don't know the rules of if there are two platforms. So we have BitBank and we have ZB.com. Possibly because BitBank does a tremendous amount of volume, and I'll show you that in a moment. Maybe there was some transferring of XRP from one platform to another? Maybe? I don't know. But you can see in today's volume, it's just minuscule. However, if we go to um, BitBank, you'll see Oh, wow. Now, that is where the XRP volume is happening in Japan. Just quickly, though, I will go to Alex Yang's LinkedIn website because I think it's interesting. He is uh, got an interesting background. He was the executive director head of the rates hybrid and structured trading at Nomura. Nomura is a huge securities company here in Japan. It's 95 years old. It's one of the most established and largest uh, securities financial companies here. Uh, he was in Hong Kong when he did that. He was in charge of the G3 derivative and algorithm uh, index trading. And then he was also the vice president exotic trader with UBS. So that is why he likes these exotic bets. You know, I, a long, long time ago, long time ago, I had a boyfriend who loved to go to the uh, horse races. And, you know, you can do your straight bets. You can go like, a, I want $2 to win on the number five horse. Or I want to go um, a, a win place show on number 12. And those are pretty much called straight bets. But when you do exotic bets in horse racing, horse racing, uh, it's really hard to go back to the straight bets. So I understand the lure of exotic trading because it just gets very interesting. All right, let's take a look at XRP. I'm going back to CoinLib again. And you can see here, these are the exchanges that are dominating the XRP uh, coin. So BitBank worldwide is 15.4% with 58 million. And this is uh, within the last 24 hours. Binance is quite significant at 47 million, which is 12 0.4%. Hyobi, and you can see Bitfinex. You can see all the breakdown on this pie chart here. Here you can see ZB.com at 18 million. So they are doing some trading, but what I don't know is, is there some relationship between the flow of BitBank and ZB.com, or do they completely keep them separate? That I just don't know. I'm, I'm just, if anybody has that answer, I, I welcome uh, leaving it in, in the comment section for me to read. And in terms of pair, you can see um, Japanese yen is a big piece of the pie uh, with BTC. Um, going into XRP pairs at 108 million. You can see US Tether is quite big at 121 million or 32.3%.
there is the Korean won, and we've got US dollar, which is uh, very small, actually. So if you have not used CoinLib, uh, I think you will find the breakdown for coins very helpful. Oh, and the last one I brought out is BitBank. So here is BitBank. In Japan, it is 69.4% of the XRP trading today. That is just by far bigger than anybody else uh, in the marketplace here. They are really still dominating and owning the XRP trade. Um, they are running their zero uh, fee campaign until the 30th of September. I don't see them losing this position uh, until another exchange comes with a better campaign. All right. Yeah, I don't you just love these breakouts? I just love these breakouts. So here's the here's the XRP. This this blue represents yen. Down here represents uh, Bitcoin going into XRP. And here we have a little bit of Bitcoin Cash going into XRP and then a little bit of Monocoin. Monocoin is very popular in Japan. Tomorrow, actually, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow, I'm meeting with my Monocoin miner friend for coffee in Shibuya, as we always do. At least once a month, we meet and we talk crypto. Okay, is that it? That's it. Oh, yeah, that's it. All right. Here comes your fluff. Wow. I feel like I've kept you for a long time. So here comes the cultural story from Japan. If you are new to follow this channel, uh, here comes your fluff. Do you know what this is? Look carefully. I don't want to give you any clue. But what does it look like to you? Well, could it be a candlestick, as in a trading candlestick? It is. And I want to introduce to you this gentleman here. His name is Muehisa Homa. He is the inventor of the current modern day charting candlestick. Uh, he is uh, the man who is um, uh, from Japan. He was born in, what was it, 1724 uh, and passed away in 1803. He was a rice futures trader. According to the book that you can buy on Amazon, he was worth 10 in equivalent standards, 10 billion US dollars today. <laughs> he, he, and he did it by uh, analyzing the price movements by recording in his uh, candlestick symbols. And he was able to therefore have an edge to predict the direction of price. So he really believes that traders emotion uh, have a significant influence on the price. And he tracked psychological behavior using those candlestick characters. And uh, you can find that even some of the um, names of those candlesticks uh, all those candlesticks have names, like this is a, uh, a doji candle, for example. And many of the names uh, still have their original Japanese names. So everyone at the time was tracking rice contracts. But what did uh, he do was he would take an emotional approach to the mar market, analyzing fear, greed, and herd mentality. And he found a way to accurately observe the behavior of the masses and manipulate them to his advantage. So he tracked the opening and closing price 
with the high and low of the day and place them in a chart. And the graphic represent representation was a series of columns that looked like candlesticks today, uh, so hence the name. Interesting, huh? He took uh, an extremely chaotic market and brought some order and insight to why prices did what they did. And the patterns that repeated themselves over and over again became his bedrock for future price moves. Honma made huge contributions to the early candlestick charting. All right, so this is a um, great little article that talks about the actual birth of the candlestick. Here is a uh, Herami. This is one of the original Japanese name. And then we have the evening doji star. And also we have the downside tusky. That's also one of kept all these years later. It still keeps its Japanese name. So you'll find uh, this information is uh, historically interesting. This gentleman here, Steve uh, Neeson, wrote the book, The Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques, and it's still available out there today. All right, everybody. Yeah, so it all started with uh, rice trading. It's fun, huh? Take care. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.